Hello everyone. Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss about the deserialization of XML response content. The steps will remain same what we followed for the deserialization of the JSON response content. So first I'm going to create a separate test method. And let me copy this piece of code to our current method. So the header will be application slash XML and we need to change our model. So for the XML response, we are going to use this model. So if you look at this model, it contains list of laptop object. So this will be rest response dot data dot laptop. Because as you can see here, the response what we get in the XML format is a list of laptop object. And let me remove this three line of code. So let me put the breakpoint at line number 114 and run this script in a debug mode. Now let us see what we get after the deserialization. So as you can see here, there is only one object which is present after the deserialization. But if you look at the response of the get endpoint, you can see there are more than one object present inside the XML. So the REST SHA framework will automatically deserialize the response content if the response content is in JSON format. So for deserialization of XML content, we need to add some additional step. So the first thing what we need to do is to create the object of deserializer. So although we are going to use the APIs which is coming from the REST SHA framework for the deserialization, but these are the additional step which we need to do when we want to deserialize the XML response content. So first we will create the object of this class that is .NET XML deserializer and now we are going to use this object for the deserialization. And the second change what we need to do is to use the normal get method for sending the get request instead of this get method with the type parameter. So here I'm going to use this object that is .NET XML deserializer and inside this there is a method called deserialize where we need to specify the model and the response. So now this statement will deserialize the response content and return as the object of the model. So this will be replaced by model object. So let me put a debug point over here and run this in a debug mode. So let's see what is inside our model object. So as you can see here, the count is 14. That means it is able to deserialize the content of the XML response. So laptop name. And let me get the list of features. So these are the list of features. So let me add the validation also. So as you can see here, this is a list. So from this list based on the ID, I'm going to get a single laptop object. And after that, I will add the validation. So data dot laptop, which is a list. And use the anonymous function to filter out the data inside this list. And then use this validation.
so this will be replaced by laptop so this is a list and in order to filter out this list i'm going to use an anonymous function and it is going to evaluate this function for every entry which is present inside this list and once the criteria is true it is going to return that object so i have a single laptop object and based on that i have added the validation so let me run this script so it's passing now and let me change one of the expected value and see now in this case it should fail so as you can see the script is failing that means our assertion is working properly so this is how you deserialize the xml response content using the rest framework